All right, let's get started. Um, today, what I want to do is I want to uh, continue our discussion with mass tan. Um, we're going to do another problem today. This one's going to be a beam. And um, what I, I formulated the problem to sort of explore a lot of other stuff in mass tan. So as an example, um, how to plot shear and moment diagrams how to define your own beam section, how to apply uniform loads, like a lot of the stuff that we didn't cover with the truss. Um, but before I do, I kind of have a, a slight little side discussion I would like to do regarding your project. Um, and so, but I also kind of want to explain what Mass Cane is doing uh, in a couple regards. Now, um, I have here on the whiteboard, just as a, a recap, remember, we didn't really talk about this a lot uh, uh, last time, but the sign convention in mass tan, remember I said that all the forces are to the right are positive, all the forces uh, and deflections upward are positive, etc. Well, this is kind of important from a result standpoint, from actually interpreting what's going on uh, with the analysis. So I kind of want to talk about that a little bit, and, a little bit and, and also sort of wrap that into a discussion regarding Excel and what we can do to make our lives a little easier on the project. So everybody look up here for a sec. Um, if you haven't already loaded your project though, you can go, or your, your trust from last time, hopefully you have that saved. If not, just follow along with me here. It won't be too uh, challenging. Um, here is the trust that we analyzed in our previous uh, lecture. And so I've got the problem uh, done. Um, what I want to do though is, you know, I want to actually get some data that I can use uh, for some calculations out of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to file and I'm going to go to create report, okay? And what I'm going to do is, I'm, uh, just for the sake of discussion, uh, I'm only going to indicate two um, results. Let's look at displacements and let's look at element results. Let's look at displacements and element results. So then we'll hit apply and we get a report. Actually, hold on, hold on, sorry. Let me, cl let me clear that. Um, I'm going to do, um, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. We'll do displacements and element results. We'll hit apply. Yeah, that, that's enough. So we'll hit apply. Um, if you want, um, I think in your version of mass Hand, you might have an indicator where there's a vertical bar that's used to separate values. Do you all have that? Is that some of you might have that dependence upon your version of mass Hand when you open up the view report option. Uh, you can use that if you want, but uh, regardless, it doesn't really matter. What I want to do is I want to take this and I want to export it into Excel in a manner that makes sense. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit save text. Um, uh, let's see, save text. Actually, you know what? I'm, I'm changing my mind. I'm just going to do the element results. We'll do that. Save text just to keep it, uh, just to keep it simple here. We'll just do the element results. Okay, so save text. Uh, I'm going to go to, I'm going to put this on the desktop just so I can easily find it. Um, and we'll just call it report. Okay. So if I go to the desktop, I should see now a little text file called report. And if I open it, here's what it looks like. Okay. Um, now you can do this in as many reports as you like. It doesn't matter if you do one or a hundred, it doesn't really matter. Um, I just wanted to kind of set this up to where I have, you know, a single set of tables. Now, what I want is I want to be able to do something with this, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of this. So I'm going to hit Control A to highlight all of it, and then Control C to copy it, and I'm going to paste it into Excel. Now, if I do that, um, the problem is is that Excel has not taken this data and spit it out into columns, right? Have you, I think in 111 you all learned how to use the text to columns wizard, or you all probably done that before where you take a, a data text file and, and put it into columns. So let's do that. So I'm going to go to data, I'm going to go to text to columns, okay, and what I'm going to do is fixed width, and then I can scroll down here a bit and I can, I can actually set it up. So what I'm doing is, uh, let me scroll up a little bit, I'm more interested in the forces, so maybe I'll put a column here, put a column here. So I'm just sort of clicking on the screen where those divisions are. And if I hit finish, I should get this, okay? Um, is everybody kind of able to get that? Is everybody kind of able to do that? You should be able to, to do that in some fashion. But what, what's probably more salient about the, the, than just the Excel tricks, which I feel like you could probably work that out, 
Um, especially as you're doing your project, you could just go back to the lecture recording and look at that. I'm more interested in making sure that you can interpret the data. So I kind of want to look at this element force table. So let's take this element force table. Let's make these values a little bigger. And um, I'm going to take these values and I'm going to turn them, turn the scientific notation off. Sometimes I think that's a little distracting. Okay. So um, you should get a table that looks something like this. Okay. Um, is everybody kind of following along with me on that? Whether you've done it in Excel or just seen what I'm doing here, I just want to see if you all generally understand the idea. Everybody kind of get what I'm doing so far? Okay. Now, what I want to do, though, is I want to look at some elements, and I want to see what's going on with them. Okay? So everybody look up here. Everybody look, look up here at the board. I want to consider element one. Okay? So what's happening with element one is I'm getting... So this is element one, element two. I'm getting two rows per element, and every element is showing the same number on top and bottom, but it's showing it in opposite signs. Okay? And it's what does that mean? Okay? So let's look over here. Let's consider element one. Okay? So element one has two joints or two nodes. So we'll call this node one, we'll call this node two. Okay? So that's why it says. 1 and 2. Okay? Now on node 1, what do we have? We have 73.125. So 73.125. Now my question for you for this first value, this negative 73.125, which direction is that facing? Left. left. Because right is positive, right? So this is a left force. So what's going on on the second node? We have a 73.125 going to the right. Now take a look at this picture and tell me what is going on with element one. It's in tension, right? Because the first number is negative, the second number is positive. Okay? Now on the flip side, let's look at element four. Okay? Now element four says, okay, element four, I have a right four, so we say element four. This is 63.542 to the right, and over here, 63.542 to the left. And so what's going on in element four? It's in compression, okay? So Dr. Mike's tip and trick is what you can do is just look at the second number for every element, And if you look at the second number, if the second number is positive, it's tension. If the second number is negative, it's in compression. That's my little tip for you, is that whenever you're doing truss analyses, just look at the second number, okay? Because the second number is, so here's tension, here's compression, that's positive, that's negative. So does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions on that? Everybody good? Okay. All right. I mentioned that because, so whenever you do your truss uh, for your class project, what you're going to do is you're going to run mass cam twice. Okay? You're going to run mass cam with the real loads, and then you're going to run mass cam with the virtual loads. Okay? Um, you're going to collect all that data in Excel, and you're going to keep tweaking the member sizes until you meet your deflection limits. And so, in order to do that, you need the analysis results from MassCan, so you need to be able to query that and you need to be able to interpret it uh, in order to get the data that you need. Does that make sense? And so, like your final, quote unquote, final MassCan analysis, what you'll do is you'll put your real loads back on the structure, you'll put the final members on there, and if you do it correctly, you should get the same deflection in MassCan that you're computing in Excel. Okay. Sound good? So, and when we get closer to our project, I want to make sure we're given time in class to discuss and see if anybody has any questions and whatnot. Okay. All right. So today what I want to do, um, it, so before I move on, any questions on this? Okay. Before we move, right, so, so before we move on to influence lines, I want to have another um, this example today 
uh, looking at uh, uh, deflections and, and shear and moment diagrams and rotations and all that good stuff. Um, but really what I want to do is I want to try and explore some of the other features in mass pan that we really didn't get a chance to discuss um, in our last example. So in order to do that, we need another one. Now again, just to make sure that we're all on the same page with mass pan and how it works, so what we're doing is, um, so first off, let's make sure we all understand the process, that we are going to use consistent uh, uh, units. Um, we're going to, uh, in terms of creating a model, we uh, uh, select our command on the top, we enter the data on the bottom, and we just go from left to right. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two, three, four, six, seven. Um, six, seven. So what we're going to do today is we're going to explore some additional features, and the specific list is internal hinges, because we didn't talk about that last time. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're also, um, last time what we did is we just um, used the library of sections inside MassHand. We're going to create our own today. Um, we're going to look at different support conditions, and we're going to look at uniformly distributed loads. And so here's the model that we're going to do today. Now one of the nice things about doing beam analyses is that the joint creation is really easy because it's all just along a single axis. Um, the other thing I will mention in my model here is that I have an internal hinge at B. Okay? So we're going to create four nodes and three elements, um, but we're going to have a lot of extra stuff that we have to apply here. So instead of um, walking through the mass pan file up here, I'm going to guide you all a little bit. I want you to kind of do uh, a lot of this work on your own today. Um, today, so, so we're going to go uh, in uh, the same order that we did last time. So the first thing that we're going to do is define the geometry. Um, and so that should be pretty easy for this model because we don't have joints at all different locations. Um, and we don't have members going from here to here, and here to here, and here to here. It's all pretty linear. Um, but we do need to adopt consistent units. Okay? So our joint coordinates, um, we've got four joints that we have to apply. Um, and the y and z coordinates for all of those are zero because it's all just in one line. Um, and you can either enter the raw number directly or you could just do 16 times 12, 32 times 12, 48 times 12, okay? So I want you to go ahead and define the nodes and the elements and uh, go ahead and get to work. I'll give you all a minute or so. This shouldn't take too long, hopefully. I already see many of you who are already sort of rocking and rolling on it. install the app or the, the add-on to um, MATLAB or was it uh, standalone? Maybe try to reinstall it. Or uh, are you just accessing it right here? Maybe from the start menu? The only, the only thing I can think of is maybe trying to reinstall it. Look at that a little later if we can get resolved. Yeah. I'll pass it to Yes. Just do general info and hit apply. 
I mean, you only created four, but it looks right. Okay. Yes. I do. I handed them out on If you get one of these. Okay. Is that working? Is that working? Okay, give, give it a bit. We'll see. All right. Any other questions? How's everybody else doing on the node creation? Yes. Is there a way to like edit node? Or uh, yeah. Okay. So let's look at that. So that that happens. Okay. So which is, do you have one that's wrong? Yeah. Put it. Put it in one. Okay. So what I would do is I would actually. Um, so you can move a node, but it might actually be easier to just remove it. So just remove it and redefine it, because you only got the one. So go to geometry. Yeah, okay, just go into geometry. And then uh, it says remove node right there. Do you see it? Yep. All right. Okay, um, am I good to move on? You tell me, any other questions? Okay, um, one thing that, so I want everybody to follow up up here because this is something that's kind of important for later problems, so everybody watch this. So whenever you're defining an internal hinge, what you do is you change the stiffness properties at the end of an element, um, and what you do is you define a connection inside Mastan. Mastan has two options, it has a flexure connection and a torsional connection. So it's a hinge releases moment, we're using a flexure connection, okay? So what we do is the way that you model a connection or a, or a hinge is you put a node where you want the hinge, okay? And then you release the moment from one of the members, okay? Um, so so let, me, let me go back to my model. So if you look at my little model right here, everybody look at the model. So what I have is, see on element one, how I have the circle just to the left of node two. So what I'm indicating is that I'm going to release the moment on the right end of element two. I could have easily released the moment on the left end of element one. That would have been fine. Okay. But what you don't want to do is release both. Okay. If you release both, mass hand will think that's two releases and that might cause an unstable structure. Okay. So only release one of them. And you're going to have a homework assignment, I think, that has a hinge. So you need to uh, uh, only release one. The way that you do that is once you've created your elements, you just go to, uh, in the uh, um, geometry menu, go to define connections. Um, and so you're going to um, go to element one and create a flexure connection uh, on uh, the J node or the second node. And you just change the option from rigid to pin, okay? Um, and so if you call that node J, so the way it's uh, uh, notated in uh, mass hand, it's node I, node J, so J being the second node. Um, and so if we were doing it on element two, we would use node I on element two. And so when it's all said and done, your screen should look something about like this, and you should have a little circle right here on this end. And so you could put it over here, and you would actually get the same answer, so, or the same response, okay? And again, if you've done this correctly up until this point, the elements should be dashed dotted because we don't have any properties on them, okay? So, everybody good on the connection creation? Okay, so what you're going to do is, okay, so the way I would do this is change them both back to rigid, hit apply, then clear this, then click it, go to pen, hit apply. So uh, just to clarify for everybody, if you accidentally create a connection on the wrong element, just go back to that element and make both of them rigid and hit apply, and that will fix it. Sound good? Okay, um, so properties are going to be a little different on this model too because we need to define 
sections and materials in much the same fashion, um, but we gotta create our own section with this problem. Um, this problem gave you an I value of 15,000 inches to the fourth, or was it 15,000 or 10,000? What was it? I can't remember. 15, okay. So we can't use like the W10 by 49 or, or what have you. We have to create our own, okay? So just so everybody's aware, and I want everybody to pay attention to this part, okay? Whenever we're doing a beam analysis or a frame analysis, we have to create an area and a moment of inertia. And I know some of you are thinking, well, wait a minute, I wasn't given an area for this problem. So in situations like that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the, a, a new section with a moment of inertia of 15,000, and we're gonna uh, use the ZZ term because 2D moments rotate about the Z axis. Remember, if you have an XY coordinate system, two dimensional moments rotate about the Z axis. So we place our moment of inertia uh, of 15,000 on IZZ, but for the area, we're just gonna use a value of one, okay? Um, the area is not going to affect the overall response in a beam analysis anyways. If you had a frame analysis, you know, you'd probably either be given, you know, you'd be given the area. Um, so if you wanted to um, uh, model a frame but not consider axial deformations, what I would probably do is make the area really, really big, like, you know, no, 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 as big as possible. Okay, so area, the area value won't affect the results unless you have loads along the axis of the member, okay? So um, you're gonna create a mob or create a material, you're gonna create a section, and then you're gonna attach it, okay? Um, I'm gonna give you all a sec on that and let's see uh, uh, where everybody's at. Okay, so let's, let's explore. Can you open that file and just say there's something new? Try to save as and save it as something new. No, no space, no space. Okay, hit save. Okay, now what we're going to do, is this yours? Okay, now what we're going to do is geometry, um, remove nodes. Save that and see if it works. I was gonna, what, what I was going to try and do is like, sort of fictitiously start a new file. So it didn't work. Okay. How's everybody doing on um, material and section attachment and creation? Looks like everybody's kind of figuring that out for the most part. Some folks getting to the loads, and I like it. This is great. All right. Everybody good? Okay. Um, let's talk about defining conditions. So um, I have here a little table which might uh, help guide what we're going to do here. So a couple of things. Um, so first off, we're going to talk about fixities. So fixities, we have a fixed support at node one. So in order to apply a fixed boundary condition, we have to restrict three motions, the X displacement, the Y displacement, and the rotation. But again, in two dimensions, when we're talking about rotations, it's rotating about the Z axis. So we're doing X, Y, and Z, okay? For forces and moments, okay? So node four has a load, and we're gonna call it negative 40 because it's going downward. And so for the moment, so this one's the one that probably takes just a little bit of explaining. So what we're gonna do for that moment at joint four or node four is we're applying a moment of 2400. And the reason we're doing 2400 is because it's 200 times 12 because it goes from foot kips to inch kips. But the reason why it's negative is because the moment is clockwise. Remember, 
Positive moments in mass scan are counterclockwise. So since the moment at joint four, or sorry, it's counterclockwise. The positive moments are counterclockwise. So since the moment on the problem is clockwise, it's got to be negative. Okay? That's why we're applying a 2400 inch tipped moment that is negative on joint four. Okay? Uniform loads, we have elements one and two that have a uniform load and it's negative in the y direction, and what we're going to do is we're going to say 0.9 divided by 12, but it's going to be negative. <coughs> Bless you. All right. So I'll give everybody a minute on that. done your model should look like this so you should have green arrows indicating where you've applied loads and red arrows indicating where indicating bleh, where there are reactions I got tongue twisted there um, and so at that point you're ready to run the analysis so you literally just hit the button and hit go um, one thing to keep in mind is that you are running a planar frame analysis not a planar truss analysis so the difference between a truss and a frame uh, in mass hand is how it considers bending and frame elements and beam elements use the same K matrix, use the same spring matrix that we talked about last time. So planar frame analyses work for both beams and frames. Um, so once, if you've done everything correct, you should hit the little apply button and you should get that message which indicates the analysis is complete um, and then you're ready to start post-processing the results. So I'll give everybody uh, a few minutes on that and see uh, how we're doing. Is there anybody that, that has hit the analysis button and got an angry warning? Okay. All right, let's see. So you first, then you. What's that? Same as yesterday. What did yours say? All right, so. So first thing we're going to save it. So we're going to go file, create report. I saved your model just now. Okay, what happened with you? Uh, same point error last time. I don't think it's the same problem. Okay, let's see. Um, let's clear text. And let's save your model. We don't lose anything. Create report. Anybody else get an angry message? Did it not happen? Did it happen again? Yeah. I can just try to reinstall it. I don't. I don't know why. Because like last time, I don't know. Yeah. You're the only one getting that one warning. I don't, I don't know. understand why. <laughs> you're, so the only thing I can think, in all seriousness, the only thing I can think of is maybe you have like a firewall or security provision on your laptop that's just not liking the program for some reason. Yeah. But we'll look at it a little bit later. Yes. Oh, yeah, this is what I was saying here. So if you get that, what, what you can do in Excel is do text to columns and say, 
there's a limited factor, use that bar which is over your inner key and it'll split everything. That's what I was doing there. Did you have a question? Oh. Anybody else getting an angry message from Mass Stand? How about anybody back here? Y'all good? About everybody up here. Are you all good? Okay. Um, so I do want to mention a couple things. So if you have run the model, now we actually want to start seeing some stuff. So what you can do, there's, there's a few different ways we can query results. So we can obviously create a text report, but we can also create some pretty pictures. We can uh, generate some diagrams. Uh, we can export a photo. So the first thing I want to do is look at shear and moment diagrams. Now, the one thing about the moments, they are going to be big. They're going to be big numbers because they're expressed in inch kips, not foot kips. Okay. So what we're going to do is you can go in and you're going to plot either shear Y or moment Z. Now, one thing I will mention, dependent upon your version of mass hand, because I've noticed some differences between the, um, the app and the program and what have you, that you will probably get everything that I've got here, but you might have some sign differences on your shear diagram, but that, I mean, the answers, uh, the, the magnitudes and whatnot uh, shouldn't be affected at all. But you should get a shear diagram that looks something about like that. What I've done here is I've plotted, here's what the shear diagram looks like if you plot it as unfilled, and then there's what the moment diagram looks like if you plot it as filled. Okay, so you have an option there uh, in MassCan to fill the, the items, or fill the diagrams. And again, like if you look at your moment diagram, like that's a ridiculously high value, like bless you, like 73.15, but that's 73.15 inch kips. If you take that and divide it by 12, that would be foot kips, which is what we've usually been plotting with. So this is, you know, negative 10,080 or what have you, but that's inch kips. Okay? Bless you. I've also done a display shape. This is what it looks like when it's plotted to a scale of 10. Notice how the display shape kind of has a little kink right here. Why does it have a kink right there? Because that's the hinge, right? At the hinge, it's going to have a little bit of a, you know, a, a, a quirk to it. Okay? Um, does anybody have any questions? I want to see if everybody's able to get these display shapes and whatnot. What, that's what I was saying is that depending upon your version, you may have some sign differences on the shear diagram, but that's it. the magnitudes are going to be fine. So that's no big deal. So one of the things that, that so um, if you start getting into the land of mechanics, you can find different ways the shear diagrams are plotted. One of the things that actually gets kind of interesting even in civil engineering is a lot of civil engineers will actually plot moment diagrams upside down. And they plot them upside down because if you plot them upside down, it tells you where to put the rebar in a reinforced concrete beam. So like if this beam was reinforced concrete, um, what this moment diagram is telling me is that um, basically I need to put rebar on the bottom of the beam here and I need to put rebar on the top of the beam here because Concrete is a material that some of you are learning is very strong in compression and very weak in tension. And so what is reinforced concrete? We put re, uh, rebar in the concrete wherever there's tension. So we put it up top here and down here. So some people actually flip the moment diagram so that you can see visually how much rebar you need to go. Um, I don't. <laughs> I don't. It, it's more of a... Um, uh, I've noticed that happen. I, I think that's more of a... Uh, it might be more of a European... Uh, philosophy of, of, but ultimately it doesn't really matter. Does anybody have any questions? 
So you all should be able to, um, hopefully, like, let me ask you this. Does anybody think they're going to have too many issues on the homework, homework due Friday? Because homework due Friday is just one trust, one mean. Um, but not just with the homework. I want to make sure that you are feeling comfortable with your project. Okay? So let me say two items about your project, and then I'm going to give you a few minutes of your life back. Okay? Number one, um, so I would try and work on getting your um, homework modeled uh, as soon as possible. But let's talk about your project. So everybody in here should have gotten the analysis or the grade report from submission one. Read what it says, because for the most part, everybody selected alternative was fine. But for some of you, there are some tweaks that need to be done in order to comply with the project requirements. Look at it, okay? That would be point one. Point two, go ahead and create your trust inside MassCam, okay? Go ahead and start working on that now. Because when we start having our troubleshooting session, you know, if you can have some work done, it'll make that go uh, a lot smoother. Because again, remember for submittal two, you need to submit the MassCam analysis, you need to submit a CAD drawing and your calculations. So it's not a lot of work, but if you wait till the very last minute, it might start to, to, to pile up, okay? Sound good? Well, I'm gonna give the majority of you um, uh, 14 minutes of your life back, but if you're having mass tan issues, let's stick around and take a look at it, so. All right.